So everyone have one of these? So you got one too? Cool. All right, so this is very short. For this essay, you must build an argument of fact that effectively proves, disproves, or definitively complicates a current and commonly believed fact, misconception, or conspiracy theory. So like, pick one. So yeah, you could even pick a conspiracy theory, but it has to be over a fact issue that you can actually prove to a reasonable extent. So whereas you could be like, 9-11 was an inside job, but who's on the inside? And so you could maybe make an argument for the first thing, right? But then if you try to say who did it, like it was the Jews or Bush, or it was Obama before he got into office, or it was whatever, like whoever you wanna say, that part's a lot harder to prove and I don't think you can do it within five pages or prove it at all because someone will assassinate you before you actually get close to really proving it if you are on the right track. Right? Obviously. Okay, also, it needs to be a current thing and flat earth doesn't count. Okay, I just had to get that out of the way. That's not something to even go into. Plus there's like a million people, you could just go and like watch a YouTube video and be like, oh, and then just type up the YouTube video. And so I am aware of that scenario too, so don't do that either. First thing about this essay, uh, claim of fact. So people really seem to struggle with this because it's so easy to go towards value. Remember we had the fact value policy and then we put it in a pyramid, right? And so this is the first step. Each essay after this is gonna do this and more. Yeah, we got three more. Congratulations, one's out of the way. This one's analysis and it is already kind of doing the fact thing, but you're doing it with like one thing that I'm directing you towards. And now you're gonna add a bunch of sources to make something whatever you want it to be. So long as it's only focusing on fact. Keywords you might wanna remember when we're dealing with fact, then you're going to wanna think about it as this is or isn't this way, right? Uh, it will or won't do that. Uh, it does or doesn't do this, it did or didn't do that. Yeah, once we get to value, then it becomes good or bad. Notice with this one, I didn't tell you to say good or bad or anything like that in it, but maybe it's already obvious that you're saying good or bad. It may be obvious, you just don't go there. If you like the subject, sometimes people get burned out on the subject, and in that case, just switch it up each time. But if you're really into this, if you know that it's gonna be like your major even, and you just wanna like explore all the stuff while you can, and then make sure that you become like an expert in it, then you can focus on the same thing with every essay and then just develop it even further. Now I'm not saying like repackage the whole thing and just like add three more paragraphs or something like that. But if you already know what you're trying to build off of and you already are fully aware of everything in the circumstances of this topic, that will give you a better grasp of when it gets to the right and wrong of it. So yeah, good, bad, right, wrong, should, shouldn't. And then once you get to policy, it is uh, legal, illegal, can, can't do it because it's legal or illegal and we're trying to push that. So once again, these are in red, this is green. It's supposed to be green, I don't know why it looks like kind of yellow from there, right? It's green. Okay, well, most guys are a little bit uh, colorblind. That's a fact, right? Or is it? It would be as simple as disproving it. So it's kind of got to be an issue that is a little bit more difficult to disprove or prove in one single paragraph. Maybe there's something a little bit more complicated about it. It doesn't mean that I just only see in black and white. When we say that most men are somewhat colorblind, it is just very subtle. So yeah, there's certain colors that I'm not as good with, but that doesn't mean that I can't see color. I'm definitely not gonna make a video like a Logan Paul where I act like I'm colorblind and cry on camera when I get those glasses. Has anyone ever seen that? It's like this trend where just a bunch of people were doing it. And then like a month before that, he made a video of like, he just got new lighting and he's doing different colors so he can like clearly tell. He's just like this fat liar, all those guys. Like almost trains you into being it. It's like, do I be honest or do I lie and make a ton of money? And what do kids know? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get all into that though shortly. But a couple things that get into our way, we hallucinate our reality in a lot of ways. Has anyone ever explored this idea? So you guys don't see in 4K. 
you see differently and your brain processes data differently than computers and everything else. So when you observe something happening, it's already done happening by the time you're actually processing the thing. Also, you all have a blind spot. Like you could find it with your finger where there's a certain spot. Like if you keep your eyes exactly in the same place, you'll be able to find where your finger actually disappears or whatever the thing is in front of your face. There's also every time you move, your vision actually cuts out. That's really weird too. Just for like a fraction, like you can't even tell. Uh, do you guys remember the, um, that blue gold dress? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect example. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think that was like around the same time that Russia was invading Ukraine, that, that became a big deal. Yeah, there was like a million troops that like entered Ukraine and like did some gangster shit. But we do that stuff, right? We make a big deal out of it and people get super irate over it and it's a trick, right? Your brain is not able to figure it out. Same with the yawning thing, yeah. the sounds. Yeah, there's even a thing that happens. It's called infrasound where a lion or a tiger, a big predator cat will like roar and there's a frequency that it hits at a certain hertz where it will actually freeze their prey like your body just kind of shuts down and you have to like stop. Like even fans in your house might do that and you'll get this like creepy feeling. There was even this thing with gas lines in some like rural middle America city where people were just getting this eerie feeling and it was because the gas lines were emitting this weird frequency throughout the whole area and the gas company is like denying it completely and the guys like going and trying to figure out all this science behind it. He did this like whole documentary on it and it's real. He figured out that like that's what was happening, that it was directly related to the gas lines. So that was a trip. So several things, right? All of your senses, we tangibly observe things and empirically know things because we can touch them and understand them in a very physical way, those things can be warped from our brain. So those were some perfect examples of it, but then we also have, here, how about this one? Has anyone ever seen this? You've got A and B. Which, which one's darker? The squares. This one's A, that one's B. B. Don't tell me because you know you're getting tricked. Tell me what you truly see. A definitely seems darker. There's no way around it, right? Does anyone see B as being equal? You don't really see it that way. The only way you see it that way is if you go here. And then, and then you clearly see it. But otherwise, even when I go back, I still can't see it. Can you see it over there even if you know it's there? Not really. It's so weird because our brains are computing. It's changing it in your head. What about these two? Yeah, this one's supposed to be yellow. That one's supposed to be brown. I can't see anything else. Not unless we do that. And then you can clearly see. Even when I look back over there, still can't tell. Brain's doing it. These ones are always fun. Just look, just look at it it's like moving mm -hmm. and you can't like control it it's really weird and it's just a jpeg it's nothing else what about this one is this doing anything for you, oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. it seriously just won't stop moving yeah our brains do this stuff and it's cool because it, it helps us be able to process things that we wouldn't be able to like if i'm moving and my vision blocks off but i'm able to clip together and make images to fill those gaps, like that's pretty incredible. That's like some hardcore software that you're working with there to, to work with your outer senses. So I, I think that's pretty impressive, but there's a couple more things that will augment that, like the way that you even remember things. So your memory of something that happened to you, it's stored in your gray matter. You know that, right? Like all memory is stored in the gray matter. It's not in like one single place in your brain. Yeah? Okay, it's more complicated than that. Even each individual memory is spread out everywhere. Like what you tasted at that time, what you smelled at that time, what you heard at that time, it's all in different areas. And then anytime you're trying to remember that thing, your amygdala and hippocampus and all that stuff, it all comes in kind of like in your, your RAM, in your computer. You use all that space to like work on things. The thing with your memory is that it changes over time. Things that you could swear 
where like this is how it went down like when I got kicked out of my house at 15 and my mom like said some things to me I could swear very clearly that and you would of course remember those things it's a traumatic experience where your mom's like I hate you and I never want to see you again but then when I talk to her like 20 years later and she's like I never said that I invited you to leave and I don't think either of us are right at all I invited you to leave? What the hell does that even mean? What did you do? A lot of things. What do 15 year olds not do? All that to say, what changes your memory? Because you become a different person than you were when you were 15. You have different beliefs, different friends, different likes and dislikes, aesthetics. Pants were baggy when I was 15. Now they are not. But now they're kind of getting baggy again. And then I'm thinking, wow, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to trip on those. They're going to fall down. You kind of look like a hobo. But that's, that was my style at 15, so it's weird to think about. And my memory, your memory, will even change accordingly to that. So it's very difficult to trust memory, to trust your own memory, to trust your own understandings of things as well as others. And so the way that we work around that, this goes pretty far. So they're trying to figure out how to uh, get rid of scurvy back in the day. You know, do you guys deal with scurvy now? No, but it's uh, something people would get from a lack of vitamin C, but they couldn't figure out why they were getting it because they didn't understand vitamins at all. So uh, here's a little thing talking about the process of trying to figure that out.